Fallout is the latest video game adaptation to be turned into a TV series. This series of games is beloved by many, but not by me. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I do not like any of the Fallout games. The main reason for this is mostly due to how the games themselves actually play. I've never been a fan of any games that run on the Bethesda engine. Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout, you name it. I want to like these games, but I just, I can never get into them. But there's no understating that Fallout as a franchise is iconic. So iconic that despite only playing maybe an hour of the games, I've still managed to pick up a bit from like cultural osmosis. Things like, you know, the Vault Boy, the Pip Boy, Another Settlement Needs Your Help, The Game Was Rigged From The Start, whatever the hell this thing is. When I reviewed the Halo show a couple of weeks back, I looked at the show entirely through the lens of how it was adapted from the source material, and how as a fan it failed and sometimes met expectations. But when I talk about Fallout, it's going to be through the eyes of just how it's presented to a new viewer, such as myself. Because I believe even an adaptation should be able to be enjoyed by someone coming into it from an outside perspective. The best adaptations are always able to be enjoyed by fans and newcomers alike. Things like Lord of the Rings or Dune, or the first few seasons of Game of Thrones. But let's be honest, it should at least appeal to one of these demographics. And if it's going to be one of them, then it probably should be the fans first. I am nowhere near qualified to talk about Fallout as if, you know, I like the games, because I don't. So if you've played the games and watched the show, then I want you to let me know what you think, because I have no idea how well they adapt the source material. And I've purposely kept myself in the dark, not researching anything for this one. Hello there. I'm here to show you a wonderful place. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. You need to go home. You come from a world of rules, of laws. People are going to come after you. Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. So, what do I think about Fallout, the show? I really liked it. Now, it's nowhere near perfect, and we'll get to that, but overall I was pleasantly surprised at the show. So, to start us off, I really liked the look. The set design is really good, and there are very few times that I felt like the places and the characters didn't feel real. I will say in those very few times where the characters are looking at something that's obviously not real, you can really tell because the rest of the sets in the production are actually like so well done that it just kind of makes the bad parts stand out a lot more. But for a TV show, there was a great amount of effort put into making everything look good. It's just a really big breath of fresh air when it comes to having a show just feel that little bit more authentic. Like the CGI in the show is really good for the most part. The gulper thing, it looks good. That thing was horrifying. Um, honestly, the only bad CG in the show was like the power armor when it was flying. There was this one shot that was just like really awful in one of the first couple of episodes. And I just wish they kind of didn't put it in because it looked really awful. <laughs> but you know, that was one time out of like not very many that broke the immersion. For the most part, everything just looks really, really good, especially for like a TV show on Amazon Prime. Real quick, does anyone else like kind of feel that a lot of Amazon Prime shows feel like very flat in the way that they look? Like it must be the cameras that they shoot with because like shows like The Boys or Reacher and Upload, they all feel this way. I don't exactly know what the reason for that is, but I know that Fallout doesn't fall into that category because it just kind of feels more, I guess, cinematic. It just doesn't have that like flat look to it. I know maybe I feel like I'm losing my mind, but I just only see it when it comes to those like Amazon shows. Moving on to the story and the characters, I, for the most part, really enjoyed the story in Fallout. Um, keep in mind, I know nothing about the games, but I found pretty much every storyline to be engaging. There are three main characters in the show and they're spread out over four storylines. There's Lucy, who's played by Ella Purnell, who's visiting the wasteland in search for her father. Uh, there's Maximus, played by Aaron Moten, who's part of like a cult-like community and called the Brotherhood of Steel. And Walton Goggins plays the ghoul and Coop, who gets the last two storylines, one based in the present and one before the apocalypse. Lucy, Maximus and the Ghoul kind of represent like three different ideologies. Like Lucy is like the morally good character and Maximus is the morally grey character and 
the ghoul is just evil. And they have their own storylines that like intersect and split off from each other at different points throughout the series. It's kind of like one main through line story and like they'll just join it and leave it at certain points. And look, I was kind of honestly hoping that the main cast would spend more time together. Uh, Lucy is the only character who gets to spend time with anyone. Whenever she's with Max, the ghoul is off on his own story, and if Lucy's with the ghoul, then Max is on his own story. And I would have liked to have seen all three of the characters do something together. I feel like it would have been interesting to see how each of the characters would react to like kind of the same scenario and kind of help flesh out how they would all deal with the situation together. I do, I will say that I did enjoy each and every one of those characters and their stories. I did kind of lie before, there's actually a fourth character and a fifth storyline I didn't mention, and that's Norm. Uh, he's Lucy's little brother who stays behind in the vault after Lucy goes to the wasteland. And because I haven't really explained the plot at all, the vaults are kind of like doomsday bunkers with communities inside them after like an apocalypse happened. The main reason I didn't mention Norm before is because his plot has almost nothing to do with the main plot. Unlike the other characters, I kind of find him hard to define. He doesn't have many strong characteristics. It feels like he's only the main character of this storyline because he's the only character left to put in that storyline. But despite that, I kind of found his season-long storyline to be pretty engaging. I did have some problems overall, but I can't really go into without spoiling the story. But I will say for now that there is so much more left to explore with all of these characters and the story that what we got, I felt, was just a little bit lacking. Now, I'm going to go into spoiler territory. Please skip to this time code if you want to remain spoiler-free. The whole uncovering the vault conspiracy with Norm was really good. I kind of hated the vault story to begin with, and, like, when they were trying to figure out the moral quandaries of, like, what to do with the raiders. And I feel like most of the vault dwellers were just acting like absolute morons. But as the story went on, I kind of realised it was all done on purpose. I still think that their ignorance is played up to like an almost cartoony amount. But overall the storyline became engaging enough that the lack of really strong characters actually didn't matter in the end. Like Norm is an okay character, but his only real characteristic is that he's inquisitive, I guess, and he's trying to overcome being a coward. But the only place his story leads to is the setup for the, like, the twist of the whole season. Uh, so let's talk about the twist. I kind of hated that almost every character had like a very personal stake in the grander story of, at whole. It felt so contrived that Lucy just so happened to run into the scientist who was on his way to Moldava, Moldava was the person who kidnapped her father, also the scientist was you know, carrying the MacGuffin of the show, and her dad was also the only person who could unlock the MacGuffin of the show, and that her father also killed her mother and bombed a giant settlement of people that Moldava lived in, and that Lucy's mother and Moldava were friends, and that Lucy's father also lived in the pre-apocalypse days and knew Coop before he became a ghoul, and that Coop also knew Moldava before the bombs dropped. On top of the fact that Coop was also an advertising mascot for Vault Tech and that his wife worked for and had a very large hand in making all the vaults and potentially dropping the bombs for the apocalypse. Now, even if we ignore how contrived all of that was, the fact that this group of people are so like intimately involved with all of the big events of the show kind of just makes this whole like worldwide apocalypse feel so small in scope. Even Maximus, who I'd say is probably the most like personally removed from the plot point, was still a resident of the town that got bombed by Lucy's father. Now despite all that, the show does a good job of like intertwining everybody's stories together. You'll find that like plot points in Coop's story will give hints to where Norman's story is going, and like even though I'm not a fan of how closely knit the character's personal history meshes with the story, I can't say that like, like it isn't satisfying because it it kind of is, because despite all the things I've just said, the vault -Tec conspiracy was still a very fun story to like watch unravel. So I want to circle back to the character. Lucy is our typical audience surrogate character, and I'm not sure if Fallout is really like this, but she does seem to be like someone who'd pick all of the, you know, quote unquote, right thing to do options in a, like an RPG. And Ella Purnell does a fantastic job of playing this, you know, optimistic girl in a foreign and hostile land. I never doubted that she wouldn't give a good performance, you know. After seeing her as Jinx and Arcane, like, she's earned the benefit of the doubt for me for life. What I feel like they're doing with her character in the show is, like, slowly pushing her towards being the morally grey character of the show. I like that she has shown that trying to solve every situation by being the good person doesn't always result in the best thing happening. It shows her and us that, like, the Wasteland rules are different, and the show hints towards the end that she might go on a bit of a dark streak after, like, her whole worldview got shattered. Before I said Maximus was the morally grey character, 
and I mean, yeah. The show does keep us in the dark with some of his decisions earlier on, to kind of make us question what kind of person he is, but I think he might just be stupid. He knows how the wasteland works, but he's kind of emotionally stunted. It does seem like as the show goes on, he is trending towards the light side, but we probably shouldn't ignore the fact that he's the reason the, the Brotherhood showed up and like fucked up that group of people at the end. And I find that his character is just kind of inconsistent, and the only way I can chalk up as to why is that he might just be a bit of an idiot. I do think that the character is very well acted and like, I like Max's story because it kind of takes us the furthest outside of the main story and following his character sets up the world as a whole a lot more than the other characters do. On the polar opposite of the spectrum is the ghoul. And this guy is basically the man in black from Westworld. Like, he's pretty much the exact same character. Quick spoilers for Westworld. Even his pre-war counterpart, Coop, feels like, you know, the pre-Ed Harris version of the man in black. Like, these characters are, like, almost identical, and, and, like, hell, this show would probably be, like, a good substitute for, like, the last season of Westworld. This feels like a better last season of Westworld than the last season of Westworld was. Back to the ghoul. What makes him an interesting character is the stark differences between Coop and him. And, like, the entire show, I was, I was kind of waiting for the ghoul to, like, show even, like, the slightest bit of humanity that Coop does. It's a testament to Walton Goggins as an actor that, like, he can be, like, the most reprehensible character and still somehow make me want to root for him. But there's, like, no character development for him. Coop is the one that goes through the character development, but, like, doesn't translate to the ghoul. On one hand, I kind of admire, the, like, the restraint in taking their time with this character, but on the other hand, like, when we met the ghoul, we pretty much had one question about him. And by the end of the season, we still have that same question. And none of the stuff that was developed pre-apocalypse days translates to the ghoul now. Like, how does this guy become this guy? And it seems like throughout the show, like, Coop is, like, kind of developing to be, like, a better person, like, a better character. So how does it all kind of reset to become who this who the ghoul is and you know I, I i imagine they have a plan for him but it just kind of feels like we weren't given any hints the, the characters just feel so polar opposite now i found myself liking the side characters in the show a lot thaddeus was a fun character the scientist was also really good like michael emerson is a phenomenal actor so i like it when he shows up in things and you know hell i, I even liked lucy's cousin whose name i've forgotten who was in the vault you know, he starts off as kind of like a one-note joke. Even he has some depth to him. The show's side characters all are very colourful and they all have that just that little bit of depth that makes me want to learn more about them. It does a good job of building out the story as a whole. I do like it when side characters have, you know, a bit of character to them. Fallout does a good job of like not overloading the viewer with information. I do appreciate that it takes its time, but at the same time, 8 episodes isn't quite long enough to set up all it was trying to do. I feel like what I saw was just a taste of what the wasteland and the world of Fallout is like. And this is where I feel like I may be missing out as someone who hasn't played the games or knows anything about the lore, because there were a couple of times I felt like I was just lagging a little bit behind. Especially when it came to some of the factions of the Wasteland. Like, this wasn't the case with the Brotherhood. They were, like, exceptionally done. I, I get the gist of them. But it's more the other ones that show up that, you know, I won't spoil, that I kind of take issue with. Like, there are a few things and groups that are kind of mentioned, but then they don't end up affecting the plot at all. And it kind of just made me wonder, like, if it was even, like, important at all to mention or show these people. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the music. The 50s classics... Uh, just another one of those like fallout staples that you know everyone knows about it, it's good of course it's good it's that little last piece of the puzzle to nail the like whole aesthetic of the show the show will always play like you know one of these tracks for establishing shots or and for when something over the top happens and over the top things happen a lot of the time and you know i love it but what's interesting is that the actual soundtrack of the show actually doesn't take that approach and it goes for like a more modern like orchestral approach what I love about this is how bassy and twisted it is. It's a very big contrast to like the classic tracks I mentioned before. Just, it somehow just worked. Like by all means it should feel jarring, but it doesn't. But the one big flaw I can point to from the entirety of the music in the show is the yodeling. Now, it doesn't really sound like yodeling, but that's how it was, like, described in the subtitles. Whenever the ghoul is on screen doing something, 
there's this like yodeling as part of his theme and I just straight up hate this shit. Like, and I know it's probably like a little bit of a nitpick but it really really bothers me. It's only just due to the fact that it's kind of jarring and I know it's weird to say you know because there's like a modern orchestral soundtrack meshing with the 50s soundtrack and somehow that works but the yodeling is the thing that puts me off. I don't know why but it just it takes me out of it every single time I hear it. It just feels intrusive. I think that's what puts me off of it. Overall, Fallout is a very good show, but it's kind of treading a fine line between leaving me wanting more and making me feel like I didn't get enough, if that makes sense. The world this show inhabits is interesting and I wanted to see more. At the end of the first season, I feel like I was left with more questions going in and then I got answers for questions I didn't actually ask for. All the actors give great performances and the production quality is extremely impressive and way above what I was expecting from this show. If I was to give the Fallout show a rating, I would probably, it would be an 8 out of 10. It is well worth your time and I think that if you're not a fan of the games or know next to nothing about them like myself, then I think you can enjoy it and it does stand alone as its own product. Fallout was just renewed for a second season and if they can build up momentum a little bit and you know really work on building out the lore just a little bit more, I feel like the show can become something special. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said before, if you played the games let me know how it stacks up as an adaptation because I'd, I'd really like to know. Um, if you liked this video please leave a like and subscribe if you're new and I will see you all in the next one. See ya.